Welcome back to another episode of the Girl Stop Playing Podcast. It's your favorite homegirl, Coriel, here to encourage you to stop playing with your potential and start working for what you want in life and in love. You already know that I'm bringing you the information and the conversations to help you make the money and get the honey. You can have it all as long as you are willing to work. And today we have a working woman in the building. We got my girl Monique in the studio. Hey there. I didn't include a last name because what is your new last name, Monique? My new last name is Sneed. Okay, I wanted to. We so want to make sure we put some say. respect on your name. That's okay? right. Monique Rose Sneed now. Oh, that's right. And I was long, just Monique Rose. How long have you been married? I have been married a little over a year, year and a half now. Okay, so we're going to get all in your business today. Is uh-oh, that cool? That's cool. She said, uh-oh. It's cool. Um, <laughs> because we came, I don't even remember, years ago, a couple years ago, mm-hmm. we got connected online somehow. I don't remember, I don't even remember Me how. Me either, it just happened. Yeah. Found out that you were the owner of Milk and Honey, yes. right? Yes. Milk and Honey, the real Milk and Honey. Correct. Okay. Well, Milk and Honey and the real Milk and Honey at some point, but yes. Okay, okay, both yes. at some point. At Let's some talk point. about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you've just, you evolved into just doing so many more amazing things so i want to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself because i don't even know all of the fabulous things that you're working on so what do the people need to know about monique all right monique rose i think that's what we're giving me now is multi-hyphenated entrepreneur somebody called me that and i liked it so i'm sticking with it Mm -hmm. um so right now i am still restaurateur by trade i no longer own milk and honey i sold the brand in 2020 so the last location in june of last year okay so i'm no longer an owner or affiliated with milk and honey um, but I have moved on. I do have the bodega on Main, which is in Atlanta, Georgia, mm-hmm. on Main Street. I also have Lacage, which is in Camp Springs, Maryland. And then I ventured out into other things outside of restaurants. So I have a beauty brand called Mink and Honey. I have a health and wellness brand called Mode Total Wellness. I own an exotic snack shop and a recording studio with my son, Jamie yeah. Michelle. Um, I have Monique Rose Management, which is my consulting. Um, I mainly do restaurant consulting, but I do some other type of business consulting mm-hmm. as well. Started a trucking business with my husband, which is called r and Freight. Um, I think I touched on everything. Ho- hopefully I didn't miss anything. But <laughs> yeah, baby. so it's a lot going on. Where do we even begin? Where did you begin? Let's start there. What was your first kind of dabbling into entrepreneurship? Um, so I'm born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I... Um, Not even talking about entrepreneurship, but I have always been a worker. I had my first job at 13. I was a caddy. I was carrying people's golf clubs because I realized I could make me a little money. It was the only place I could work at 13 with a work permit. So I've always had an amazing work ethic, which came from my mother. I was raised by a single, single mother. She raised me and my brother in Milwaukee, and that was not easy watching her do that. So what I always at an early age realized was, Uh, Me and my brother are nine years apart. If she can just take care of my brother and let me figure this out so that my mom doesn't have so much Were you older? I was older. Older, I am nine years older than my brother. Um, So I thought it was just me and my mom for quite some time. And my children are actually nine years apart. That's crazy. But, um, yeah, so I just always worked. So that's where it started. It didn't start in entrepreneurship, but even while working, I always had something else going on that would make some money. So I'm caddying at 13, but I realized, oh, if I bring snacks for the other caddies, they'll buy them. And it was cheaper than a what hustle they with the hustle. Yeah, exactly. So that's really where it started. Um, as far as an official business, I own my first bar at, I can't remember if it was 21 or 22, but around that age, um, which was a huge feat. But I also learned my first business lesson there because I had no paperwork. And so mm. what the woman did was come back in like a year and take it back for me after I had got her business back up to par. And there was nothing I could do because I, I didn't have the paperwork. I didn't have a paperwork. I didn't have a lease. I didn't own anything of the LLC. So you were almost subletting. True. But running a successful business. Exactly. Her business was failing. She was about to close it. And I said, well, give me a shot because I was bartending. I've been a bartender since 18. So, um, and I really enjoyed it. So I was like, just give me a shot. And I was like, what do you have to lose? You're already not making any money. Mm-hmm. I'll, and she said, well, pay me for my liquor license because she had liquor. I said, no problem. I said, I'm going to make some money. I'm going to pay you. Did that. Turned it around in a year. She came, swooped it back for me. Hard lesson. Hard so, lesson. Where did you go from there? Because that could have shut a lot of people down. Mm. Like, I've done all of this. I've built it up. And now I have nothing. What was your next move after that? Um to do it for myself and do it the right way. And a lot of people probably would have shut down after that, but I've always worked. Like, literally, up until Milk and Honey peaked its success probably five years ago, I've had a job, like mm. a day job, like a job. 
So I always worked. I was a correctional officer for five years. I got my Series 7 and 63 license. Like, I dabbled all over to see where I would, like, land. What you, what I, I was good at. I think that is the part that so many people miss out on. It's the experimentation. It's, I'm just going to try. Mm-hmm a bunch of different stuff and see what I like. And right. I think w- that's what we have to allow our children to do versus pointing them in the direction that we think they're going to make money in or exactly. that we think is serious or that we think is professional. It's like, no, figure out what you like so that when you get to this big age, now you're not trying to figure it out later. So right. I love that you started at the tender age of 13, yes. just kind of figuring out what you could do, how how this whole business thing worked, and obviously to be able to open a successful business at 21 mm-hmm. in the bar restaurant industry, yes, yes. a beast of an industry, mm-hmm. I think that just speaks to the beginnings of you were building. You didn't, that was your first business, but it wasn't your first rodeo. Right. right? Yeah, you I, had, I had, had no started. idea what I was doing. <laughs> I had no, you know, and I really, honestly, I'm still learning. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people think, oh, you made all this money, you did. I'm still learning. So that was like, I'm glad I learned that lesson then. Right. I'm glad I experienced... Before you had so much to learn, so much at stake. Exactly. And I love that you even brought light to the fact that you still had a job. Because, baby, we're not saying that on the internet. Oh, listen. Well, I'm going to tell the truth. I had a job until, like, very recently. Like, when we, you know, when we had, like, two or three milk and honeys, I think that's when I stopped working. So, I want to pause there for a second. Because I think... Instagram specifically <laughs> has encouraged so many people to just take this leap of faith. Instagram is not going to pay your bills Listen. if you fall <laughs> after that leap of faith. <laughs> and we've just, and not even that everybody's promoting quit your job, but I think it's dishonest if it's you're very... promoting start this business, start this business, I'm making all this money, but mm-hmm. you're not saying I also have this security blanket supporting me. Mm-hmm. So now I go out trying to follow your footsteps thinking I'm just going to make all this money being an influencer or doing whatever you're doing online, but mm-hmm. I don't really know what's going on right. that you're not posting about. That's so layered. Well, first of all, with the faith, faith without works is dead. That's so that's the part that they're not talking about. Faith is amazing, but if you don't do the work, ain't gonna happen. Like it, it's not going to happen. And there's so many ways that social media tricks us and so many ways that people trick other people with social media. It's such a gift. If I could not do social media, they I would sign not. Sign me up. I would not. But, you know, because of the businesses that's that the I'm hell, in. That's the climate and, that we're in. Yeah, you can't pass up free marketing. Like, you would be mm-hmm. insane to pass up opportunities. So you ha- there's a thin line. Like, I have such a love-hate relationship with it because I watch and I see, you know, like you said, I know you got a job. You know, but you everybody else people, don't know you yeah, got a job. People forget. People know you in real life. I know you have a job. I know, and again, not knocking no anybody's shade. hustle, yeah. no shade, no nothing, but I know you had a drug dealing boyfriend that gave you $100,000. I know that. I know that, you know, the way that you, you, you position those cameras and make it look like your house is this is really not that. You know what I mean? But people that watch that don't no know. Clue. And that honestly is why I started making sure that I told the truth on social media. I want you to know where I came from. I Mm -hmm. will never pretend to be anything. Like people say, especially my son all the time, you need to pop it. You don't need to pop it in the... I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You're right. I'm not. Because I want people to see the truth. I was a teenage mother. I had my son at 16 years old. You know what I mean? I was... I'm not supposed to be here on paper. Statistically, I am not supposed to be doing what I'm doing. I don't have a college degree. You know, I went to college, went for a year and said, I got to get back to work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? the math was not math. The math was not math. I said, I'm about to borrow all this money. Oh, all this money and still have a child and not be able to pay it back yeah that part. i was like you know there's so many things so and not that you have to do it my way you know i share these things so that you know i have a daughter now i have several i have three stepdaughters now but we don't use step bonus daughters i have you know people that are looking up to me now so i can say don't do what i did i'm not saying have a child at 16 i'm not saying don't go to college i'm just saying that it's possible it's to possible. go to create your own path. And I think that has to be the message. There is not a cookie cutter. If you one plus one it does not equal two when it comes to life. Man. Right? You cannot <laughs> tell someone if you just do this and then you do that, you're gonna live this dream life. And I think that has been the message for so many years on Instagram. I think the climate is starting to shift and people are start like the veil is starting to lift. People are starting to realize they didn't got scammed yes. and they just been following fraudulent <laughs> oh, people. My you know, but for so long it was just this. I have to, if I do this, if I, you know, run this play, if I get this Airbnb, if I start this tour road business, if I do this one thing, it's guaranteed to work mm-hmm. out. And that is not, that's not the case. The only thing that's guaranteed is work. That. there, Whatever path you choose, it's if you do the work. work, 
if you do the work, it always intersects with success at some point. Maybe not exactly how you envisioned it or how you wanted it to be. But if you do the work, the skipping of the work is the problem. That, you want things that like fast nah. track. That is what Instagram has made us think that success can be instant. Yeah. And that is not the case. It's so not. I wanted to ask you, like, what would you say your girl stop playing moment was? Like that moment when you're like, I got to stop playing with my potential. But I'm I'm feeling like 16 year old Monique, mm -hmm. something in her. Maybe it was when you found out you was pregnant, when you had the baby. I don't mm -hmm. know what the. Um, the environment was around you. I don't know mm -hmm. what your mama was saying, what the what what the child's father was saying. Yeah. I don't know what that experience was, but I can just imagine if to have had a child at 16 and mm -hmm. to be where you are now, mm -hmm. there was something that sparked something inside of you um, in that time. I've always had, even if I wasn't um, in religion, always had a relationship with God. I've always had a relation and believed that there was a higher power that was pushing me. So I, from a young, even before getting pregnant, used to tell everybody in Milwaukee, I'm going to be a millionaire and I'm going to get out of here. And they, of course, you know, one, it was beyond anything they could imagine. I didn't know any millionaires. I was told work. I told you I was a correctional officer for five years. You got this good government job. You get your pension. You get your benefits. You work this job. You retire. This is what was drilled That's into me. I, there were no entrepreneurs in my family, um, aside from my grandfather who owned a church. But even him, he worked. Mm -hmm. He had a job. So it was like it wasn't taught to me. I just felt and always knew there was something more than this. This cannot be all that God promised. This is, cannot be it. There is more to life than this. I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't even know how I was going to get out of Milwaukee. But I always, so I think that, what moment that was, I think it was just God whispering to me always and saying, I got more for you, daughter. Just keep going. Keep working. I always heard, keep working, keep working. Mm. People ask me to this day, why why you work so much? Especially now, why you work so much? Because I've been there, and I know this can be, gone and Ain't no go back listen mm -hmm. in a second and i don't want to go back there um but if i did have to i would guess what i would do I work your way food. out I, exactly i do the work again i have no shame in going back to work for somebody else my resume is crazy now i could give me a a heck of a job right now if i wanted to you know what i mean so that i think that was the moment the 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 adult moment though where i said you gotta get yourself together is i had a partner in uh, milk and honey um, who was also somebody that I had a personal relationship with. And that was not my idea. Milk and Honey was his idea. And I helped grow it. And when all the things personally took place that made me realize this person is trying to strip me of the part that I played and something I know I did, it was like, get yourself together. Do not allow anybody ever to do that to you again. Was that almost like a full circle back to that 21-year-old self? It, it seems like it was very similar. Like, you've done this work. I know you've done this work, mm -hmm. but I'm going to take ownership of that thing. Exactly. I'm going to take it back. The only difference was this time I protected myself with paperwork. But everything else, you're absolutely right. I allow somebody. And that's where, for me, the anger came in. Forget the personal stuff. It just was like, dang, Mo, you let somebody do this to you again? Like, all over again. You know this. You know so better. So knowing this and having had these... Uh, I'm going to say bad experiences. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship comes. We always glorify the great part, but we don't talk about the messy part, mm -hmm. the hurtful part, the, you know, balled up in the fetal position trying to figure out what I'm about to do part. Yes. And you said somebody personal, so I'm assuming you don't really want to talk about that. We don't have nothing to. to talk about. It doesn't exist, nothing but to talk about. it's nothing to talk about. It's it was just, we've all, I don't just say, most of you, I hope, are not in that situation, but I have put myself in a marriage before, in a relationship for many years that I had no business Bam. being in. I allowed people to treat me in ways that I, I can't even imagine now in this space, you know, like who I am now. Like, I look back at that and it's almost surreal. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, you was tripping. You know what I mean? Like, what was wrong with you? You had a lapse you... in sanity. When I For found years. myself in an abusive, <laughs> listen, when I look back to who I was when I was in an abusive relationship and it's so like foreign that person it's like girl you are not yourself you yeah. literally became someone else to even be in this situation to be in it. you're right and so many women specifically find ourselves caught up in you know one thing led to the next and now we're in it especially yeah. when we are you know building somebody up growing a thing you know and we've really dedicated and committed ourselves to it and then yes. a lot of people look up and they have nothing so i love that you learned that hard lesson early mm -hmm. so that you could protect yourself this time around yeah for um sure. what is your advice though in terms of business partnerships because we can't live in silos you know it takes True. collaboration it takes partnership 
it should if your dreams are big enough you should not be able to just do it by yourself Mm -hmm. so knowing what you've known being Mm -hmm. burnt the way that you've been burnt what's your advice and even for yourself how do you operate in business partnerships now um well totally different for sure um just speaking on the last situation i made that more than what it should be that should have just remained a business situation so what he liked me So what? We were both going through a crazy time, and he didn't have no money, and I didn't have no money. I also have a a real sense of loyalty to people because they did something for me at one time, and then it just continues on far longer than it should have. You're giving them credit for that one thing for the entire... For the entire time. And, I, you know, I had to learn, you know, that assignment had long been over. It was no long. I didn't. I did so much extra credit. I don't know what I. I went on and on and on. I had already earned that grade. You know what I mean. So now I realize that you know I don't force anything. Mm-hmm. Absolutely nothing. If if I have to force it, I'm not talking just business, um, personal relationship, friendships. I mean, even down to going somewhere. You know, you're trying to go somewhere and something seems like it just keeps happening. You don't. I don't Let even go. Mm-hmm. I don't go. It's not for me to go. I'll see y'all the next time. I don't force anything. So that is the lesson I've learned. And that's what I would tell people. If, you have, if it feels forced, if it feels, if you're making allowances for somebody mm-hmm. constantly, if you're making excuses for mm-hmm. somebody, if you are hiding things from the people that care about you, that's not in a situation. That's not a situation you, you should, should be in. in. Because when it's right, you want to tell people you want to share you know what i mean and that is what my marriage now has taught me me and my husband taught me um like that's not how it w- was supposed to be but you i can didn't see the difference i can see the difference and i know you know it's cliche everybody say well i had to go through that to let, experience this and, and appreciate this i wish i didn't have to go through that but that is so true mm-hmm. i do not think i would appreciate my marriage now like I do if I had not experienced what I've experienced before or even have been prepared to accept it because a lot of times we got to get drugged by the clown who we think is all of the things in order to recognize the king and again that sounds real cliche it does. but from someone who was real wrapped up with some clowns mm-hmm. yeah. right I yeah. had to go through those things I had to learn those lessons I had to see what not to do what I didn't want what's not a good fit right in order for me to actually appreciate a good man because right. a lot of times the goodness doesn't come wrapped up in what we you know what that version of us wanted it to be and if we do not mature and evolve and grow we're not even gonna be ready for the good one we're not even gonna be in position to recognize them so i definitely know that you know we know it all happens for a reason it's hard we wish it had to happen but (laughs) for sure like oh my god what was i doing why and why and why exactly So with your, you have a son and a daughter? I do. You have a son and a daughter. Mm-hmm. What is your advice to them or how are you guiding them? What was your advice in terms of college? Knowing what you know about not, that doesn't have to be a requirement. You right. were able to carve out a different path. So what was your recommendation for them? Um, I tried not to recommend because I am very biased. I feel like um, it's not needed. You know what I mean? But I don't discourage anybody from doing it. I'm glad I experienced mm-hmm. the year in college I experienced it was an experience. I stayed on campus. I, I met people that I still talk to to this day. It was an experience. But for the path that I was on, it wasn't needed or mm-hmm. required. And I think that now, let's fast forward now, in my 40s, it's definitely not needed in today's climate to be successful. Now, am I saying that it's not um, you know, valuable? I'm not. So I didn't encourage or discourage. Um, my daughter at one point said that she was not going to college. I didn't say, oh, no, what do you mean you're not going to college? Well, my thing was, well, what are you going to do, though? Mm -hmm. Let's think about, well, where is this going then if you don't go to college? She ultimately decided she did want to go to HBCU. She is now a student at Clark Atlanta. Hey, Clark Atlanta. Yeah, so I, I, um, and even in that, her picking of the major, I kind of just steered her. She at first was going to do business management. Monique Rose Sneed is your mother. Why would you pay? Why would Come I on, pay? Hello. I ain't gonna say Mama you pay because I gotta pay. Why would I pay for you to go to school for business? When Do I'm business. When I'm business. So if you wanna, you know, learn business, I got you in that. But what else are you interested in? So now she's a fashion major, which is really what I believe is her true heart's desire. And so, you know, I, d- I didn't incur it. My son um, did not go to college. He um, is a business owner with me. He learned entrepreneurship from me. We now co-own two businesses together. Like, that is my legacy. You know, that is what I instilled in him. You know, and I don't feel bad that he didn't go. My son didn't even graduate from high school, let alone go to college. He dropped. Now, did I want him to do that? Of course not. I say to him all the time, you're going to go ahead and uh, get your GED or something. But, you know, he's doing, you know, the work, and he's taking care of his family. So I'm still proud regardless. I just don't want people to feel like if you don't do that, 
that you failed in mm-hmm, some type mm-hmm. of way. Um, we just do such a disservice convincing kids that there's only one way. You know, when I was in school, it was all college track. There was no, when my exactly. mom was in school, there was college track and tech track, mm-hmm. right? You could go learn a trade. Trade schools are almost non-existent exactly. these days. We don't have no electricians. We don't have no plumbers. <laughs> Everybody is out here, like, doing the content, the, doing the content <laughs> right? Which is cool, because here we are. Right, However, exactly. that is not the only path that's not the only way that you can be successful so i love that you did not necessarily force you kind of allowed them to become who they were going to become anyway exactly because if we force them to try to do what we want them to do they're not going to be fulfilled they're going to be trying to just make us proud and then they're going to be at a big old age trying to figure out okay what am i really passionate about what am i really good at exactly under our care i think is the best time for them to learn those things because they have a safety net to For learn sure. versus you got all these bills now you're ruining your credit trying to figure out what you want to do with your life so i love that you didn't pressure them in that way what would you feel like if they could learn one business lesson from you what do you hope that they have picked up um to not put all of your eggs into one basket um again cliche but it's so true like because the pandemic taught us more mm-hmm. that more than anything else like to be able to pivot so i guess that probably is the better lesson than not putting in to have the ability to move and change and not be so married to something you know milk and honey was doing really well over 30 million dollars in revenue by the time i sold but and everybody looked at me and said why why would you be selling what is wrong with you why it's doing so good you're making so why would you because i knew that was my time to exit you should always have an exit strategy in place in your mind before you even start something so i hope that that's what they they learn from me that don't be so caught up in in this one thing you know what i mean like me and my son would not be co-owners in two businesses he's a musician he is a bomb songwriter singer rapper everything but if he was so caught up in i just gotta do this he wouldn't have he'd done any he'd be missing out on and, and god willing that would still happen for you but in the meantime you know what i mean do something else so being the ability to pivot and not be so married to one thing, I think is the most important lesson because it opens you up to so many other opportunities. How do you manage all your multi hyphens <laughs> and your marriage at the same time? Oh, very with prayer. A lot of a lot of prayer. <laughs> I didn't even mention so the, for the first almost two years of our relationship, we were long distance. Mm. I lived in Maryland. My husband lived in Alabama. We met in Atlanta, but this was a long distance relationship. Forget marriage. And then for about nine, seven, eight to nine months, we were um, married in long distance. So that was a gift and a curse, too, though. We got to know each other so well because we were forced to over communicate. Mm-hmm. We were forced. I couldn't just say, oh, I'm going to go run over to Roger's house real quick. We couldn't do that. So we had to talk and we had to talk a lot and we had to, you know, discuss everything. Mm-hmm. So um, as much as I missed him and I was like, dang, this is rough. I don't know how we going to make it. This is whoa. It worked. It worked for us. And um, I don't have balance. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have a real balance. It's one thing or another at a certain time. Priority. I prioritize. You know, if I see that my marriage needs some attention, you know, before I opened this last restaurant, we both said, we need some time. We need to reconnect. We went to Cabo. I dropped everything. I was opening a restaurant literally in a week. And I said, listen, y'all got to figure it out. It's going to be okay. So we do that. We're really good about making sure that we're intentional about paying attention to what we need Mm -hmm. and everything if we put us for like we are first. he says it all the time he reminds me every day you are first before my children before my family before everybody like this union means the most to me so i think that's how we it's no balance and you know i don't think i don't i don't know i I admire people that say they have balance but i'm lying yeah i don't believe that to be true I don't believe it. I don't think that you... It's what takes priority in this moment. Yes. And literally sometimes it's moment by moment. Right. Exactly. I love that, though, that he... Had he been previously married? What yes. was it? Okay. He had been married how before, I, and I, I have been how married. How did I know before. that? <laughs> hey guys, how did I know we that? Let me, tell, let me tell you how I know that. Because a man who is intentional in that way, mm-hmm. it usually comes from them learning a the lesson. Mm-hmm. It usually comes from they've had an experience that they don't want to repeat, and now I value this one, and yep. I want to make sure that I'm doing, doing it as best as I can do not doing it the right way but just doing the the best I can do and I think so often in our community we frown upon people who have a past Hmm. and it's it's that past it's that pain that really teaches you your purpose it shapes you into the person that God really created you to be Mm -hmm. and a lot of times it it uh 
makes your life better because you've learned those lessons, hopefully with somebody else. So yeah. we ain't got to <laughs> learn any me. lessons together. Yes, exactly. I think that's the bad. I tell, we talk about this all the time. Like, we don't have, you know, people have bad blood to get over. You know, well, you cheated on me. Now I got to get over it. Or you did this to me. You said some hurtful things. Your family don't like. We you have that. We didn't have any of that. We don't have any of that. So there's nothing for me to fix or get over or, you don't have you to know. prove your love. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, it was like, and I'm like, no matter what we do, we got to keep it that way. Like, I don't, I don't want to do anything to you that's going to make you feel like, oh, I got to forgive her for this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, there's no judgment. Like, who, I talk, share with you some of my past. Any other man could have said, and this lady was in an abusive marriage for all this years. What's wrong with her? And then she went over to this clown, like, and watched what happened and said, you know, what is, you know, somebody could think something is wrong with you or take advantage of that and mm -hmm. say, well, I could just treat her any old kind of way because she as accepted as I'm not this doing that, yeah. as long as I'm not doing that. You know what I mean? I've been in an abusive marriage. I've been like for years. So you know, as long as I'm not hitting her, somebody could have done that. But you're right, because he was married before, he was in a situation where he was unhappy, where he left the marriage, had to leave two children. Like, that was hard. Like, he literally, in turn, that, that's not easy. People think men, you know, just, just, walk yeah, away. just walk away. No, that was hard for him, you know, to, to realize that now, dang, I got to try to figure out how to co-parent away from not in the house with my children. And he's not a babysitting father. He's a father. You know what I mean? So all of these things definitely help. Mm -hmm. Like, we talk about it all the time. The time that we met was exactly when we needed to meet. My husband is eight years younger than me. We Ooh, couldn't okay, have met. let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we couldn't have met when I was in my 30s because you would have been in your 20s and that would have never So worked. was that a red flag or green flag when y'all when you found out his age? Uh, it, was a, it was just something. Like, there were so many things. Like I said, we met in Atlanta. It's like, you're eight years younger than me. I'm about to blow your top with this one. You live in Alabama and you had a seven-week-old child. Blown! Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So it's like, do, 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 do. Mind you, I still had my ring on from the clown when I met him. So there were so many things going on that was like. Some eh. stuff y'all needed to work through. Yeah. Okay. But it wasn't even a work through. It was like, I woke up and realized within meeting my husband, I had moved out of a 12,000 square foot home in two weeks within 14 days. I moved into a two bedroom apartment with my daughter. And it wasn't, I'm not going to say because of my husband. I had no idea where that was going. But that was like the thing. That was the cat. That was the thing that made me realize that's your girl stop playing moment. That's the moment right there. Like, quit playing with yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, even if this don't work out, you know what I you mean? You know this ain't working this out. This ain't it. Mm -hmm. And this is a possibility mm -hmm. <laughs> over here. You know, this six, four, five, girl, get your life together. So I was like, you know what? And I was happier in that two bedroom apartment than I had been in years in this huge millions of dollar house with somebody that I had no business mm -hmm. being with. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it was like, yeah, I thought about those things. Like, on paper, that sounds crazy. Girl, he had a seven-week old child. Girl, he how did you explain living. this? Pause for the cause. What was that conversation? He told me immediately. I'm talking about first conversation. And that has been the thing that has been the glue for us since then. There was, there's been no secrets. There's been... Just the honesty. The honesty of it. It's like take it this is, this is what it this is this is what it is yeah. take it or leave it he says he knew from the time he saw me like that's my wife um i s didn't see him when he first saw me but we met at a later place and i saw him and i ain't gonna say i saw him and said oh that's my husband but it was, it was something. something i was mm -hmm. like you know and people say i love it first sight and i used to think girl you crazy in your head you gonna marry this man 10 months from when you met him you don't even know him but i was in it and within two weeks we felt like like i knew i loved this man he knew he loved me and i was like this is God, what are you doing here? So it was like, those things happen. I'm not going to, you know, I'm human. I thought about it. I said, where are you doing, Monique? This man got a seven-week-old child. What about this woman? You know, I'm a girl's girl. So I'm like, oh, my God, what about this poor lady? Does she think that y'all going to be together? What's going on? You know, all that type of stuff. And so all those things crossed my mind. But it worked. And it worked because, you know, that was my person. We met when exactly when we were supposed to meet. And those are challenges. Don't get me wrong. But if you can accept my past and what I've been through, who am I to judge for, you know, for what you're going through mm -hmm. right now? We all make poor decisions. Mm -hmm. We all stay in situations longer than we should. We all have been, you know what I mean? Like, dang, why I do that? I mean, I might not ended up with a baby because of it, but I done been in some situations. Like, you could have. Yeah, well, I could have been like, you know. And that is what I think we all have to keep in mind because it is so easy to judge everybody and I don't want nothing to do with you because of what you've done, but behind closed doors, Right. You Take have a good definitely cook. done some Listen. things that people would judge you for that mm -hmm. are unforgivable, that are bad decisions. Exactly. And even when it comes to like 
I've me and God got this thing going on that jail is just not my thing. I am never gonna get arrested. <laughs> I am just gonna play it safe. I'm not doing Thank nothing that's gonna that. take me there, right? Right, exactly. But I have done things that could have possibly like if I would have just got caught. Right. I, I would been I, I could have been. been in that same position. So to right. judge someone who just happened to get caught, mm -hmm. that to me is insanity. It you is. know, that is the biggest hypocritical thing. Like you know you didn't done some stuff exactly. that could have got you caught up mm -hmm. too. And so I love that you were able to look past that because girl mm -hmm. i definitely went on a date with somebody you know pre obviously when i was dating i'm not dating anymore. right of course but i sat down with somebody who had like a three-month-old baby and mm. that turned it the, the date turned into us talking about go back home to this right. baby what are you doing exactly. so to, so because i've been in that seat i think yeah. that it is so mature of you to mm -hmm. be able to you know take your personal feelings out of it basically and look past what this could be versus just what's sitting this, this fact or right. you know these details yeah exactly how do you think you were able to let your guard down how do you think you were able to accept someone mm -hmm. even possibly being the right person having dealt with the wrong people for so long it just like i said it wasn't a force it just flowed so it was like if this isn't it then i don't know what you're doing guy i just was like this is like there was no there were none of the things that were there before. So, for example, I was able to fully be me. I was able to, I am quiet sometimes. I am outgoing sometimes. I do like to drink and, I, you know, I like to party. I like to have a good time. You might catch me twerking. You might catch me reading the Bible. You might, there's so many, fa but I could never be all of me before because there was so much you know in abusive relationships you've been in one there's control mm -hmm. i want to control That's you the foundation yeah of it. in every way that i can from your friends to your family who you talk to how you dress what you so when i was it was like i when people i'm gonna tell you when i really knew when people that didn't even know me for real would run into me and they would say girl what you been doing you look so good you got this glow about you you look so good and i hadn't lost any weight yet or any of that stuff it just was like they knew it and they didn't even really know me they for could real. They could smell it on They you. could feel it. And I felt it. I was like, that's when I knew, like, okay. Because I had already been through the worst. I've been through an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. I've had to flee. I, fl I fled Milwaukee to Atlanta. I, my intention was to move, but I had to flee with my daughter. Escape. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Live in a, in, a, in a state of fear for a year, thinking this man's going to come kill me. He's going to find me. You know what I mean? Like these type of things. So what could really what's the worst what's worse than that mm -hmm. so so if this doesn't work out would it be disappointing for sure would my heart probably be broken if i love somebody yes for sure but i've been through the worst already so that's really what made me realize like go for it mm -hmm. and give your all give your all until you realize in the discernment now now i know better i won't make allowances for this man i'm not going to make excuses and with my husband i haven't had to do that there's no reason for me to say well Oh, he got mommy issues or his whatever. You know, like all the things that, and the aha moment I'm going to tell you is I had a husband list from, had to be at least, I moved to Atlanta in 2016, so maybe like 2012, so more than 10 years ago. And when I wrote that list, my homegirls at the time, my girlfriends were like, girl, you got too much on this list. You are never going to find this man. You are asking for too much. And I found that list, like a memory on Facebook came up. And I went through the list. He was everything, I'm talking about, and more. Even beyond, it was everything. Mm -hmm. I'm talking down to hates to see me cry, has a good relationship with his mother. My brother would hang out with him on his own. These were all things that were on my list. Financially stable, fine. And it was like a eight check marks after it. Fine. Over six feet tall. Like all of these things were on there. And he hit everyone, everyone on the head. And plus I was able to add more. And that's when I knew. I said, I man, I knew you before, before I knew I you. Before I knew you. Before I knew you. I knew what it was for me. I had always felt as if I was settling, even mm. when I married. I knew I had no business marrying that man. I got married in a courthouse and didn't even take my coat off. Yes, I had no business. I knew that last relationship I was in, we were in, engaged for you. Why was there no worse? Yeah, because that's not an engagement. But why am I, you know, there was the ring, there was the whole thing. Why am I not rushing down the aisle? Me it and didn't Roger feel got right. Me, it didn't it feel right. It was, I knew it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. It wasn't right. It was just like I was just going through the motions because, you know, ego will tell you, I don't want to fail. and I don't want people to see, oh, she did this again and that didn't work out. That keeps so many people stuck, specifically in relationships, Man, because listen. it's embarrassing. It I don't is embarrassing. Tell, I don't want to take this ring off. <laughs> I don't want to... 
for me, I have saved the dates around, on Seriously? refrigerators right. around the country. Now I got to call y'all and tell y'all to take that right. magnet off the refrigerator. Nobody right. wants to do that. But your your ego, your pride will keep you in toxic situations Horrible. just to save face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had to let the ego go. I think that's what, I didn't care that people said, oh, he's eight years younger. Oh, he has this child. Oh, he live in Alabama. What are you going to do with this? I didn't care about any of that. I did what felt good to me, what I knew that, you know, I knew the direct, that was on, the way we met was, had to have been orchestrated by God himself. There was no other way that we could have met that way at that time, at that exact day, in the way that we met, in the manner that we met. We were in two places the same night in another city that we, neither of us live in. You see me, I don't see you, and then God says, here, here she is again. Another Hello, chance, here's now. another chance, sir. <laughs> and then you take the chance. So, you know, I didn't care about that. I let the ego go. And I've been blessed. You know, I've been truly blessed. And this is this is eye opening for me. And I'm still learning, you know, like I'm still carrying stuff from other related. And I have to say, you know, I've learned to check myself and say to my husband, you know what? I was wrong for that. That wasn't you. I was projecting on you. You know, I it, this has been a new experience because I'm doing a lot of apologize. <laughs> Usually it's somebody else done something to me making up and I have to apologize and say, you know what? That was unfair of me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because th it's not your fault what happened before i mean even the blending of the family you know i didn't my my children never were abused or anything like that but i didn't ever feel that they were fully accepted by my previous partners you know what i mean so i will project that on him and he's like no we are one my mm -hmm. children are your children your children are my children we are one that's why i had to correct myself because if you heard me say step he'd be like we don't do that you know so there's so many things i'm still learning and i'm 40 some years old. 44 years i just turned 44 44 years old it. and i'm still learning what do you think is the benefit of having a younger husband Ooh, <laughs> i don't know how easy. for one listen because i've always dated people older than i was so um for one um just a different perspective on things definitely more energy more um youthful you know what i mean it's just more kind of keep more fun keeps you in it keep he keeps me on my toes in a way that you know, I've been in a relationship with older people, older men. If they and they fit, I'm, you know, I'm in my forties. If they five, six, seven, eight years older than me, they fifty. You know what I mean? It's like, no, we're not gonna be old. You know what I mean? He considers him. He's, you know, you're you're not forty yet, so you're not old. But you know, so it keeps it fun. It keeps me. Um, it's a different perspective on things. And luckily, he is mature enough that it's not what you typically think. You think men don't mature as fast, but because, like you say, he's been married. He is a father. His priorities are family. He was raised in the South. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that are important to him. You know, so um, we, we align in so many ways, but he definitely keeps me youthful. Like, I've heard from many people, like, man, you look so much. You always super pretty. Don't get me wrong. But now you look like, you know what I mean? I so love yeah, it. yeah, You have lived several lives. Right. Um, and <laughs> learned so many lessons, though, that you can take into the next season. And I think that's the important part. For sure. Um, and now you're teaching other people those lessons. Yeah, I try. But <laughs> I, I got I to gotta ask you about Keith Lee though, Monique. Okay. Real quick. Real quick just about Keith Lee. <laughs> yes. Because Keith Lee had the, has the streets on fire, right? If y'all don't know, I know y'all know, but yeah. Keith Lee goes around and does these restaurant reviews. Now, I know he came to Atlanta and you are no longer affiliated with, you know, some of the restaurants mm -hmm. that he um, that he visited, mm -hmm. but being in the restaurant space mm -hmm. and having this very public person potentially mm -hmm. coming in and sharing a, a review as an entrepreneur, what do you do with that? Like, how do you prepare yourself for the public scrutiny? Yeah, it was. So in that, this is so funny. In that situation, his visit to Atlanta, of course, was Atlanta, like mm -hmm. viral mm -hmm. because he didn't have many nice things to say. Then, of course, it was the layers because he visited the Real Milk and Honey, which I used to own. He also visited the Bodega, which I own, did not give Milk and Honey a good review, gave Bodega a wonderful review which I still thank him. Where's my camera? To this day, thank you, because I'm still seeing the residual for that. Um, but the way you prepare yourself is always, you don't have to prepare if you're already ready. So I always, like, teach my staff, the culture of my businesses are, for one, treat everybody the same. One of the things that he was so concerned about was that when they found out who he was, they wanted to treat him now like they a care. Now mm -hmm. they care. And I'm that way all the time. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm not always, it, it, there have been influencers that have come in, and unfortunately, I don't know, and then my daughter would be like, Ma, that was such and such from YouTube, that was, you don't know who that is, but they got treated the same way as whomever that comes through, mm -hmm. because I feel like, especially post-pandemic, 
people don't have a lot of money to spend, you know, after, you know, the, the money ran out that they were getting. And you come spend your dollars with me. I appreciate that. And I tell my staff that. So I think that that is why, you know, thank the Lord, we had such a great review and, you know, outcome from him visiting because we didn't have that. Everybody's treated the exact same way mm-hmm. when they come in. That. So he, he got the experience that any other person would have gotten. But and on his the, review reflected that. And his review reflected that. But also, on the flip side, to defend my other business owners in Atlanta, that's the spirit of Atlanta. I've been coming to Atlanta a long time, even before I moved here. It's always been, you know, the who's who, who you know, you get the seat. And even restaurants. They're, that's why they have the best seat in the house. Because if somebody comes in, it's that's who you them. want. It's mm-hmm. reserved for them. So, you know, I, I get that's not his thing. But I don't necessarily feel that they were wrong on the flip side for how they handled it. It's just, you know, preference. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it, yeah. it is Atlanta. Anybody who lives in Atlanta, we were not surprised by any of the things like he said because we've all experienced that. Exactly. I literally, right now, I own AtlantaRestaurantReview.com, and I've had it for at least 10 years, maybe seven years. Okay. Because of the terrible experiences that I've had in Atlanta, wow. and one day I was like, I'm about to start doing reviews. I mean, right. I never started it. Well, but come review I my restaurant, that, please. Right, I, need to, I need to just put this <laughs> domain to use. Please. But I can definitely relate to that experience of the terrible service. You're being, you know, moved to the left. You got this one-hour time limit. You got to get it. All the little things. So we, people in Atlanta, were not surprised, Keith. We, not we at all. Um, my last question, though, is a personal. It's not a personal question, but it's I want to know this personally. Okay. As an entrepreneur, Starting and trying to lead a team almost took me out of business. Was literally the most challenging thing. Like, I can figure some stuff out on my own. Mm -hmm. But when I got to tell y'all, communicate my ideas, uh, train y'all on how to execute them, delegate, trust you to be able to do it, it literally almost put me out of business. Mm -hmm. Seriously. So for you to be able to do the things that you're doing and you're not doing them yourself, you Mm -hmm. have trained people and you have a staff, you have a team, Mm -hmm. what's your advice for that element because that's necessary to get to the next level it is a team is definitely necessary uh team building is still my biggest challenge i'm not a good delegator Mm -hmm. i'm aware of my shortcomings and what i do well and what i i don't do well so delegating and releasing things and trusting that's the thing to trust somebody i mean down to an email i still will be like well send it to me first so i can read let me review it real quick just make sure you got your commas in the right place and nothing is misspelled you know so letting that go has been a challenge for me but as far as building the team i have learned to be okay with not doing everything myself and finding people that are better than me at that thing you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so that is where it shifted for me because i was doing all things i was in the kitchen i was cooking i knew how to wash dishes i knew how to host i knew how to you know even with my consulting business now i'm able to do more because i have a firm now i have a publicist that's employed i have a social media manager i have you know someone that can write a menu for me why am i up writing a menu even though i can do it you know those type of things so that was where it shifted for me find people that this is what they do this one thing the thing that you don't want to do find the person that does it and has been doing it and has perfected it and is a master at it and then i try to align myself with those people and be okay here's the other thing because people don't like to do this you have to pay people like it costs money to make money so do not try to go if you find an intern there's nothing wrong with that but expect intern Intern results Mm -hmm. expect to be frustrated because you have to train that person and teach that person so it's also where you are in your business at this stage in my business at least for sure restaurant businesses i can't teach you restaurants i don't have the time the capacity the bandwidth none of it to teach you restaurants so i find people that are in the restaurant business Mm -hmm. like they are doing that i can't teach people an engineer in our studio how to engineer how to record somebody so if you haven't been doing this already you're not the person for my Mm -hmm. team so that is what i learned and the major the one thing if they don't get anything else from this interview as far as business is concerned is take your time hire slowly and fire quickly removing people from my team that no longer fit or didn't really probably ever fit my vision has been the game changer for me mm. i used to hold on to people for so long but i did it in my life too. make excuses make allowances for them well she has three kids oh my god what am i gonna do feeling bad feeling bad oh if i fire her she won't be able to pay her bills it's christmas coming up and then it's new year's and then it's, it's always this it's always something so when i stopped doing that 
my team change because then you just narrow it down to the people that really are supposed to be there mm. that are in alignment with your vision. So I think we have to learn to let people go. That's in business, That's in life, one. in relationships, but it applies to business too. Let people go, benefit. Accept who they are, the reality of them versus the fantasy that you've yes, created. Exactly. Them. Exactly. Oof. Yes. Okay, so Monique. It's probably going to be another five minutes because you got 25 things to tell the people. But look at this camera right here and tell them where they can find you, what you got going on, how they can support. I'm going to keep it simple. So <laughs> The Monique Rose on all social media platforms. So the word, The Monique Rose, like the flower, M-O-N-I-Q-U-E-R-O-S-E. So The Monique Rose on all social media. My website is MoniqueRose.com, and you can find all the hyphens <laughs> there on everything um, that I do. And in my bio, my link tree that takes you to everything. So if you land there, great. You'll get some of everything all about my business. I try to inspire, I try to motivate, I try to teach for free. I'm teaching if you want to pick up these gems. Um, but yeah, follow me. Follow yes. your girl. We'll make sure all of her info is down below. If you enjoyed this episode, which I know you did, <laughs> go ahead and share. Okay, like it, comment below, let me know something you learned. Subscribe to the channel and share this episode with a friend. If you happen to be listening to this episode on Apple or Spotify, leave your girl a five star review. If it ain't five star, keep it to yourself. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace. Okay, before you go, I have to invite you to log on to everybodylie.com, my brand new blog where I am sharing with y'all the truth. Okay, when they told us we had to work until we died, that was a lie. When they said the clock was ticking and you need to hurry up and have those babies, that was a lie. When they tried to convince us that marriage was the magic pill, that if you find your man, you're going to live happily ever after, survey said that is a lie. And so if you are a woman that is walking into the newness of life, I want to share some resources, some lessons learned, some tips, some tricks, and some tools. Log on to everybodylied.com so we can learn and grow together.